You can score as many goals as you want, break or set as many records as you want, but if you ask any hockey player what they'd rather have between a scoring record or a Stanley Cup, you're damn right they'd say a Stanley Cup. There have been some elite talents who have taken over the game and paved the way for many players to come, but just because individually these players are absolute studs doesn't mean they ever won a Stanley Cup. Keeping that in mind, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 NHL players who never won the Stanley Cup. Daryl Sittler. Sittler possesses a remarkable NHL record that is unlikely to be surpassed in the near future, scoring 10 points in a single game. In 1976, he surpassed Maurice Richard's previous record of 8 points by netting 6 goals and providing 4 assists against the Bruins. Throughout his career, Sittler demonstrated consistent scoring abilities, excelling both as a goal scorer and a playmaker. He achieved the milestone of surpassing 90 points in a single season on 8 occasions, and he secured a position in the top 10 point scorers five different times. However, due to a lack of strong supporting forwards, he never had the opportunity to even reach the Stanley Cup Finals once in his career. Adam Oates. Adam Oates enjoyed a lengthy 19-year career representing seven different teams and accumulating impressive point totals along the way. Renowned for his exceptional vision and playmaking skills, Adam Oates led the NHL in points on three separate occasions, consistently ranking among the top 10 scorers throughout 12 different seasons. While he only achieved a single season with more than 30 goals, his exceptional passing abilities propelled him to secure a position among the top 10 point leaders seven different times. Although Oates had two notable opportunities to reach the pinnacle of the Stanley Cup in 1998 with the Capitals and then again in 2003 with the Anaheim Ducks, he fell short losing to the Red Wings and the Devils respectively. It's important to note that Oates had already surpassed his prime during those instances as he made his first appearance in the finals at the mature age of 35. Mats Sundin Matt Sundin has accumulated an impressive 1,349 points in 1,346 games played. Widely regarded as one of the greatest Maple Leafs in history, Sundin remarkably never had the opportunity to play in a single Stanley Cup final. Nevertheless, he holds the distinction of leading the Maple Leafs organization in both career goals and points. Although Sundin may have not possessed a flashy playing style and didn't gain widespread recognition outside of Toronto, he stood out as one of the most consistently reliable players of his era. Throughout his career, he consistently contributed at least 70 points with the exception of his rookie season and his final year playing in Vancouver. Henrik Lundqvist. Henrik Lundqvist has amassed an extraordinary list of achievements throughout his remarkable 13-year NHL career. He has earned the prestigious Vezina Trophy, claimed an Olympic gold medal in 2006, and set the record for the most wins by a European goaltender in 2016, which currently stands at 459. He also established NHL records including 20 wins in 13 consecutive seasons and 30 wins in 11 of his first 12 seasons in the NHL. Despite reaching the playoffs 11 times and making it to the finals in 2014, he was unable to lift the Stanley Cup during the peak of his career. When his contract expired in 2020, it marked the end of an era in New York as he signed a one-year deal with the Washington Capitals, giving him one final opportunity to chase that coveted Stanley Cup. However, we sadly never got to see Henrik Lundqvist suit up for the Washington Capitals as he had to sit out for the 2021 season due to having open heart surgery. Of course, he wanted to come back to the game, but he ultimately decided to retire. Regardless of that outcome, he will always be remembered as one of the greatest NHL goaltenders of all time. Peter Stastny Peter Stastny, along with his brothers Anton and Marion, emerged as pioneering European players from Czechoslovakia who left a significant impact on the NHL. Peter made his debut in the 1980-81 season at the age of 24, immediately making waves with an impressive 109 points and earned himself the Calder Trophy. Over the following seven seasons, Stastny consistently reached the milestone of at least 100 points in six of them. He also ranked among the top 10 point scorers showcasing his remarkable offensive abilities. Despite his prolific scoring prowess, Stastny never had the opportunity to reach the NHL Stanley Cup Finals. Throughout his prime, he played with the Quebec Nordiques, where his exceptional vision and passing skills propelled him to become the franchise's all-time leader in points. Pavel Bure in the history of the NHL, only 13 individuals have achieved the feat of leading the league in goals three times or more. 
Pavel Bure stands out among them as he accomplished this remarkable feat despite having a comparatively weaker supporting team. Throughout his 12 seasons in the NHL, Bure's teams qualified for the playoffs on just 5 occasions. The Vancouver Canucks experienced a notable playoff run in 1994 during which Bure emerged as the leading scorer and finished second overall in points. Had it not been for his debilitating knee injury that compelled him to retire at the age of 31, Bure could have potentially added his name to the Stanley Cup later in his career. Renowned for his astonishing speed and powerful shot, Bure possessed the ability to generate off independently, a skill that proved vital during his tenure with the Florida Panthers. Borea Salming Salming was the first European player in NHL history. Salming was widely recognized by many Europeans for pioneering the path that allowed European players to be embraced in the NHL. However, it was a challenging journey that he had to navigate. Salming endured consistent abuse and encountered dirty tactics from opponents who doubted his toughness and ability to adapt to the North American style of play. Remarkably, Salming never backed down and forged an illustrious career, establishing himself as one of the most accomplished Europeans in NHL history. He achieved remarkable recognition, finishing among the top five finalists for the Norris Trophy on seven different occasions and earned a spot on the second All-Star team five different times. Despite his exceptional contributions to the game, Salming never had the opportunity to compete in a single Stanley Cup final game. Pat LaFontaine Pat LaFontaine, hailed as one of the greatest American hockey players in history, achieved the impressive average of 1.17 points per game throughout his NHL career. His remarkable contributions played a pivotal role in paving the way for the current generation of talented U.S.-born players who are making their mark on the sport. LaFontaine's professional journey began in 1983 with the New York Islanders, a team that was transitioning from their dominant championship dynasty. With their core group aging, LaFontaine was seen as the crucial figure for the team's future success. However, LaFontaine's arrival with the Islanders coincided with their decline. During his rookie season, LaFontaine had the opportunity to play in one Stanley Cup final, but the Islanders were swiftly defeated by the Edmonton Oilers in a brief five-game series. Similar to Eric Lindros, LaFontaine's career was shorter than expected due to ongoing concussion issues, limiting the number of games he could play. Despite this, his exceptional skills in shooting and passing the puck were never in doubt. In recognition of his illustrious career, LaFontaine was rightfully inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2003. Through 865 regular season games played, LaFontaine notched 1,013 points. Marcel Dion Marcel Dion possessed an exceptional talent for putting the puck in the net. Despite his moderate stature of 5'9", he consistently amassed points throughout his remarkable NHL career. Marcel teamed up with Charlie Simmer and Dave Taylor on the Triple Crown line, where Simmer and Taylor provided the hard work on the wings while Marcel excelled as a goal-scoring center. His scoring ability is exemplified by his impressive career total of 1,771 points, ranking him 6th on the all-time list. He consistently ranked among the top 10 players in goals, assists, and points, achieving this feat on 9 separate occasions. Unfortunately, his legacy has somewhat been overshadowed by his lack of success in the playoffs. Not only did his teams struggle in the postseason, but he himself failed to match his regular season production. Brad Park Brad Park's career, although remarkable, coincided with the dominant presence of Bobby Orr, which inevitably put Park in the shadows. Had Park played in another era of hockey history, he would have likely garnered much greater admiration. An exceptional two-way defenseman, Park possessed superb puck-moving skills and demonstrated a physical, tenacious style of play in his own zone. Despite his immense talent, Park finished as the runner-up in Norris Trophy voting a remarkable seven times. Park's offensive ability was evident as well as he achieved the 50-point mark on 10 separate occasions. In fact, in 1974, he finished 9th in the NHL for overall points, showcasing his exceptional scoring ability from the blue line. While Park made it to the Stanley Cup Finals three times, he faced formidable dynasties on each of those occasions. He fell to the Big Bad Bruins once and twice to the Montreal Canadiens while he was a member of the Bruins himself. These encounters with dominant teams prevented Park from securing a championship despite his immense skill and contributions to the game. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to leave a like and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button.